Hey Tops, today we are looking at energy. Or this week we are looking at energy and today you should be following along with a worksheet, a sort of guided reading worksheet. Um, you, you can read it or you can just listen to the video and get the answers from the video. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, the term caloric. So in the 18th to 19th century, um, people were struggling to identify uh, the stuff that produced change. And so the, the way we described it is through the use of caloric. So so caloric was defined as this quantity, so a number that would flow from a hotter object to a cooler one because we understood that things naturally cooled down. So the caloric must have been a cause for the warming or cooling. And we noticed, I say we, they noticed that caloric was also or that we needed a cause for some phase change that the same stuff that was causing things to warm up was also causing things to change phase from solid to liquid to gas and so this term that they used was called caloric and today, the term that we use for caloric is our modern word of heat. Um, uh, Lavoisier, he was um, very prominent in um, the French, well, not the French Revolution, but he's considered the father of chemistry. And the French Revolution about destroyed um his work, but he did not think that caloric or the, the stuff, and we have to be careful, we're getting ready to define energy, but the stuff um, was an actual substance. We know that it's not, but he understood that in the way that it was stored and transferred, so the way that this heat moved, um, it was like a substance. So going off of that idea from from Lavoisier, we are going to define energy. Let me just get myself out of the way here. So the first thing you need to know about energy is that it is not a physical substance, but we treat it like one. We treat it like this tangible item that can move within a system, even though that's not really the case. So energy can be viewed as a substance-like quantity that can be stored in a physical system, even though it's not a physical substance. So storage is very important. And we know that energy, um, we're, we're leaving the idea of using the term caloric, and now we are defining energy. It's, it's a new idea to describe what causes the change. Um, so we know that energy can flow or be transferred from one system to another. And so um, energy is really defined as the ability to produce a change. And we see the change when we see a, a flow um, or we see the flow of energy when there is a change in a system. And the third important thing to note about energy is that it maintains its identity. And so that has to do, or that's similar with like the, con the law of conservation of mass. We also have conservation of energy. Energy doesn't actually change form. I know maybe in middle school you heard like, or they talked about like, kinetic energy and potential energy and it was transformed we have to be careful in using that term because nothing is actually nothing about the energy itself is actually changing it is just energy it is an amount of energy that is producing a change nothing is physically changing about the energy so we don't want to say that it was transformed we want to talk about the flow of this um substance like quantity. So we're going to use uh, a few analogies to talk about energy. One analogy that we can use is an information analogy. And when we think about energy, we need to think of the three things. We need to think of how it is stored and how it's transferred. 
and does it maintain uh, or, or is it conserved? And so let's see. So if we think of information, information could be stored on um, USB drives, hard drives. We might store information in the cloud. Um, you know, think about like music as information. We might store that um, on on our phones. Even um, when I was in high school, uh, believe it or not, I'm not even that old. But when I was in high school, we had to use the we had to use the floppy uh, disks to store our papers, and we had to go look in the encyclopedia for the information. Um, YouTube and the internet was only really like Google was only starting to blossom um, maybe my junior or senior year of high school. And so, you know, I had to go to the library to get access to the internet and like pay 10 cents for so long. Um, so uh, things have definitely changed, but anyhow, energy can be stored or information can be stored in many different ways. And we see that information transferred anytime you, um, you know, you go to the internet and you grab a file and maybe you save it to your computer or you um, move one file from the cloud to a hard drive, okay? That information, that document, whatever you're moving, the music is um, being transferred from one storage mode to another, but the music itself stays the same. Nothing really changes about the song or nothing changes about the file that you are moving. So that is showing the storage, the transfer, and the conservation. Um, another analogy that is often used to describe energy is money. So we can think of um, money being stored in banks. Money could be stored um, in online banks even or in stocks or online saving accounts. Um, money can be stored when you when you give your money to a cash, uh, cashier, okay? That money is now uh, being stored somewhere else. It's being stored with um, the, the store that you're purchasing something from. Like if you go to the gas station and you're gonna, you know, hand over a couple dollars for a drink, that, that money is now being transferred from one storage mode to another. So money can be transferred just like energy can be transferred. Um, however, it's still money. So think of it like, you know, if you have $10 bills, you might, um, 10 of them, you know, that's not a great number, but you might put some of that money in, um, you know, in a, in your wallet. And then you might go to the gas station, you might spend some of that money. So the money is being stored and transferred in different places, but it's always those $1 bills. Okay. Nothing is actually changing about the money as it's transferred. And, and you can lose, uh, you know, energy can be in, in physics. We talk about dissipated energy. So in, energy can be, um, it can leave our system and become non-recoverable. It would be like if you were to um, take a dollar bill and throw it in the fire. There's no way you're going to get to use that dollar bill anymore. So, you know, but that mass is still there. It, it has changed a little bit um, to where you can't use it anymore, but it was transferred. So just think of energy as being... Um, like I said, it's not a substance, but it is substance-like, and it's going to flow through a system. All right, so the three energy accounts that we will look at, this is really important. The first one is thermal energy, and thermal energy is the energy of motion, and this deals with the temperature of particles. As the temperature increases, the thermal energy also increases. Think of um, 
thermal and thermometer. Okay, when um, again, those particles start moving faster and faster. So thermal energy is talking about the motion. They move faster and faster. We learned a couple of weeks ago that that's going to increase the temperature. The second energy account or storage mode, these are places that energy might be stored, um, is interaction energy. This is also called phase energy, and it's in energy due to the attraction um, between molecules. So when there is a phase change, those molecules are interacting with each other in different ways. So when it's a solid, the molecules are really tight together and they are very organized and structured um being stored as a solid and then as it turns into a liquid those molecules they they're spreading out and they're becoming disorderly okay so and then once we reach a gas they're spread out even more so when we're talking about um, how close or far apart the particles are or the phase, then we're dealing with interaction energy in that solid gas and liquid. And then chemical potential energy is energy due to attraction of atoms within the molecule. So if something is, so if a chemical is actually changing into a different substance altogether, we will not deal with that, but you might see that in chemistry. All right, so there are three main processes for transferring energy. There's working, radiating, and heating. So working energy, or that process, will be covered in physics if you take physics. And radiation energy might be covered in chemistry or maybe another um, type of earth science or physical science radiation is um, you know energy from the sun is an example of radiation and then in chemistry we focus on the energy process of heating and heat is represented with a q all right so that's when um energy is entering or leaving a system through a, a phase change or a temperature change. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is called the kinetic molecular theory. Um, so first of all, I have this cup of coffee here because we're going to do quite a few examples of a hot cup of coffee so it's just here to um, haunt you I suppose or begin the process of haunting you so there are five parts to the kinetic molecular theory the first one is that particles are in constant motion except at absolute zero and that is zero kelvin Okay, a temperature is a measure of speed of particles. We've already discussed this. Particles move in straight lines until they collide with another particle or the sides of the container. So if, if you remember from middle school, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. That is Newton's first law, and we go over that more in physics. Um, also, the particles do not stick to one another or the walls, so th they're very elastic, we would say. And particles can transfer energy through collisions. All right, I believe that is all, and uh, let me know if you need any help filling out those guided notes.